70 and what that's going to do is going to wipe in like that and that should be done for now now what I want to do to make the triangle fly in at a cool angle I'm going to click here in the 3D box on the pre-composition and I'm going to click draft 3D and what that's going to do it's going to give me way more transformation op options as you can see I don't have the X and Y rotation so I can't turn it at a certain angle oops uh, con control Z's to undo delete just in case you delete something on accident and I'm gonna click on the camera actually what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna transform you don't wanna mess with the position all you wanna do is mess with the, rota the Z rotation and the scale and because you don't wanna mess with the position cause that's what the camera is gonna be used for so I'm going to turn the Z rotation, I'm going to leave it as that. And once it gets to not even a second, maybe a little before a second, I'm going to turn the Z rotation about there. And the first keyframe for the scale, I'm going to put it way up, just so you can barely see the triangle. And if you zoom out, you can notice I'm... Um, messing with a pre-comp layer and if you want to reset this just go to fit up to 100 percent um, I'm going to click right here go to the same keyframe as I put the rotation and I'm gonna put the scale down all the way I think it's around 13 that's when I can lock it on best to his face um, that's still too big And that looks pretty good. It's about the size of his face. And as you see now, the the red screen fades in. And then it locks. It slowly goes onto the target. Um, but at the angle, it just goes straight on. I want to make it come up from like underneath. So I'm going to go to camera. And I'm going to click... Um, I'm just going to click all these keyframes because I'm not sure which ones I'm going to use. I'm going to turn depth of field on. And I'm going to go to track ZY camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click and drag this right about here so you can barely see it. And then just to line up the keyframes, I'm going to bring my cursor over here. And I'm going to put it just so it's right about his head. And I'm going to fit that up to 100%. And as you can see, it comes in from an angle, and it comes in underneath. Now, I want it to come in more from the, the right side. So at the v beginning keyframe, I'm going to drag this over to the right a little more. And let's see what this does. There, actually, you know what? I'm going to drag it to the left. My bad and let's see what that does um what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to about maybe 12 keyframes or yeah 12 frames and I'm gonna turn the scale down a lot more maybe to about 140 and I'm gonna drag that maybe about right there all I'm doing is messing with the camera to get the best zoom angle I'm going to render this out really quick. And I'm going to turn the scale. Actually, I'm going to leave it as that. I'm going to ram preview it again with this little button up here and see how it turns out. And that should be good enough. You guys can mess with the camera. Um, but just make sure it's uh, the layer you mess with has to be 3D. And you use a track XY camera tool. If you use a Z, it'll rotate the, uh, um, the pre-comp one. Or the little lock-on target. And it won't look that nice. So, when if you notice in... Well, I closed out of it, but when it gets onto the target, when it locks on, just 
which is about right there, it flashes twice. And all you have to do is go back to the effects and fill. And you're going to keyframe the color right there. And you are going to make another red keyframe. Just keep clicking this little space right there. And in the middle, you're just going to make a white. And that automatically uh, makes a new keyframe because you adjusted something. And I'm just going to test how fast that white, how, fa how fast it flashes. That's way too fast. It's going to be like hard to notice. I don't even know if you guys can notice it. So I'm going to check it out again. There we go, that's perfect. Now it flashes twice in Predator's montage. So I'm just going to do that for now. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. And let's see how this turns out. Um, if you guys notice, I think the red screen flies in a little too slow. So all I'm going to have to do is go to the linear wipe and then drag that in a little more. And let's see how this looks. There we go. It flashes just about right. And all you basically have to do is, once it flashes twice, you find this last keyframe. And then you go back into here. And then turn the Twix, make a new keyframe for the 3.5. And then go one keyframe over. And then put it back on 100. And that's when you're going to turn the opacity down to zero for the triangle. And then you're going to go to adjustment layer. And you're going to turn the. What you can do is you can just make. You can go to the mask and then go to opacity. And it's at a ready at 19%. And then all you have to do is keyframe that spot. And then one keyframe after, just turn it down to zero. So it's going to zoom in, lock on, and then no scope. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a link for the sound effects in the description. And I want to see somebody like try this and post that as a video response and if I could help you out let me know um, need quick tips for Adobe or anything just uh, PM me and that's been it a whole 15 minutes sorry to keep you guys waiting but it's a long tutorial um, see you guys later